Hello everyone, welcome back to Silver Tears Tarot and welcome to our moon reading. So we've got a new moon happening here today and we're going to take a look at how that is panning out for you and what that means for you in the soulmate situation specifically. So it'll be a general reading as always for this collective. Won't resonate with everybody, shouldn't resonate with everybody, but if it does resonate with you, then maybe think about subscribing if you haven't already. Um, definitely think about looking at some of the other videos because these are all very much connected. So if you see something that resonates for you here, um, you may also have some other things that you want to take a look at um, in these in these videos. So we're going to start by taking a look at the energy that's kind of around you at this time or the energetic and emotional backdrop um, around this time of the new moon. So we've got the page of shells, um, page of shells in the reverse page. So shells is water energy like cups in, in this deck. We've got the knight of acorns. That's fire energy like wands or rods. So that's like the knight of wands in the reverse. And then we have the temperance card, all of these coming out in the reverse um, don't let that scare you. It basically just kind of means different different um, meanings the way that I read reversals. So some people don't read any reversals at all. Some people read them as the opposite of what it means in the upright. And then some people um, take into account some of those other meanings that a reversal can have. I do a little bit of the latter too. So I definitely read them. Sometimes it's it's kind of like this temperance card feels like the opposite of the balance that you would see in the upright. Um, but this Knight of, Knight of Acorns does not necessarily feel like the opposite of the Knight of Acorns in the upright to me right now. The way that it feels is kind of a, a, a torn back and forth between coming and going. And so what it might look like in this case is coming and going in rapid succession. So you might have somebody who's got that in and out sort of behavior, that in and out sort of, sometimes you get that a little bit from the Knight of Acorns in the upright when it comes out like the player. Um, in the reverse though, it's kind of, it's not specifically a player energy, but it is an in and out energy because it's back and forth between action and inaction. Um, with the temperance card, we see a lack of balance, but it's not necessarily that like this is balance that you might look like you have balance on a day to day sort of basis, but it's it's kind of lacking in the big picture um, with this type of energy. So again, this is more of a temporary energy that you guys are running through or coming through. And so it's not necessarily something that sticks around long term. Now with the page of shells in the reverse, it's a tendency to kind of want to keep things to yourself and to kind of stay quiet, which automatically is giving me it's bouncing back or it's pushing against the vulnerability that automatically wants to come out in this moon um, so in this new moon there's a sense of vulnerability that wants to come forth um, you may find yourself in situations where you have a choice between uh, choosing to be vulnerable and show more of yourself and choosing not to and it may not be a big difference for people who are observing the situation, but the difference to you um, and the way that it feels for you, whether w w depending on what decisions you make, there could be the deciding factor for you. So as you're looking into this energy that you guys are in, just something to think about. There is something about your vulnerability going on in this new moon in Sagittarius. Um, so we've got the pa page of pentacles here in the reverse. Page of Pentacles in the reverse, definitely having that feeling of a lesson that has not been learned, but don't feel too badly about it because basically it's bringing something back out for you that has been partially learned. Um, I get the sense that it has not been completely untouched, something that has been partially learned or you haven't quite put all the edges on it. Um, but you're going to be successful in that. And we see that with the Six of Wands here. So this is the Six of Wands, and then we've got the Strength card in the reverse and the Lover's card. Oh, and the Magician. All of them um, in the reverse. So the Strength, the Lover's, and the Magician in the reverse. What these are telling you is that this is a time where you might not feel as strong as good at things as much as you don't feel like you necessarily have choices or you can do the things that you want to do quite as much as usual but there's going to be something in your foundation that lets you know you're going to be successful no matter what so even if 
things don't feel like you have that manifestation down, even if it doesn't feel like you have choices in all the situations. And this is, the lover's card is about choices. It's not always about a relationship, but in this case, it's about a partnership. It's about choices that you feel like you do or don't have in this soulmate situation. And it, it goes hand in hand with this feeling of being unable to manifest. It's temporary and it feels temporary. So it feels like I'm, I kind of have my hands tied and yet I'm, I'm being put into this vulnerable position and you're, you're kind of with this, it almost feels like you're being encouraged to embrace that and just kind of roll with it, even though you don't necessarily have control of everything. But in truth, um, you're not always going to feel like you have control of everything. Um, with the strength card in reverse here, it's got that feeling of not just not being in control of it, but also not being able to affect the sort of changes that you might want to. So if you were to try and get yourself in control of it, which is something that we've seen your person try and do time and time again here, it's not going to work very well. So there is definitely a sense of this is a situation that it feels like you temporarily are lacking some of the strength that you might like, um, but you're able to roll with it and be successful. This Six of Wands is maybe the strongest card that I feel here, and it's the strong, it's that feeling of that foundation of strength despite the fact that it feels like there's a lack of balance there's something you haven't learned yet like all of that is a setup for an opportunity to be successful is what it feels like to me um, but it's like you you have to you're going to get a situation where you have the opportunity to go through something that tests you and you have the opportunity to kind of pull that out now it does feel like it's something that you have been toying with before or kind of working toward before it's that feeling of something that hasn't quite been finished with the world in reversed. Um, but with the nine of, so this is, this is beautiful. And I'm going to go ahead and say that it goes right along with the six of wands. The nine of swords in the reverse is all about anxiety that maybe you feel it, but you're not that impacted by it. Um, it reminds me of being afraid to go and have it like you're giving a speech and you're afraid to do it, but it doesn't stop you from doing it. It just, you feel the fear and you jump in there despite that. Um, strong feeling of that. Okay, this doesn't feel like it's supposed to be part of it. Or if it is, we all know that it will come back out. Uh, what did I drop? Nothing face up. Okay, so this page of swords. Nine of wands. The empress was an honorable mention. All right, and I'll start with that empress being an honorable mention. That's that foundation, again, of not just success, but also stability and strength. So you see the strength card in the reverse. You see the mag magician card in the reverse. You see all of these that could content could be a bad thing, but they just don't feel that bad to me. And mostly they don't feel that bad to me because you are allowing yourself that vulnerability. You've got that opportunity to do that. You may see your person allowing themselves that vulnerability too. Could also be somewhat temporary. So if it happens, then you know you've gotten the advice to be relatively gentle. Um, when they do show themselves, be aware that that is still going to be needed. We've determined as in yesterday's reading that this is not all in your mind um, when they come to you and you see that there's a lot of consternation in them a lot of fear um, you being gentle is going to bring a lot more positivity than than anything else anything that you might do that could be construed as defensive is probably going to push the resolution in this situation a little farther away where gentleness will not necessarily resolve it for you but it is going to at least open things up for that um, you may have something that is ending in you that you're letting go that someone else may also be letting go of it. like your person may also be letting go of something in their life and this is energy that impacts it's third party energy but it's not necessarily the third party energy that we've been talking about with regard to them and with regard to you we don't usually even refer to your third party energy where you have um, things that are also in your life that are impacting the situation between the two of you so it could be anything it doesn't have to be impacting it negatively um, but there's that sense of impact to it and there is change in this relationship I see ending something wrapping something up with that third party energy um and this page of swords kind of brings you the strength to do that. It's the willingness. It's it's almost a naive willingness, but it's a willingness to do something that feels like it needs to be done. Even though it's a naive willingness, it's not necessarily a poor choice. So let's get into what this moon brings for you. So we've already heard a little bit about embracing vulnerabilities as they come out, giving yourself that opportunity 
um, to feel it and to act on it, even though it, you might not feel like you're at an advantage to do so in this energy. That foundation, um, which I think you will also feel to a certain degree, puts you in an advantageous position. So here's why. You got the seven of feathers here in the reverse, which talks about trust and having um, being able to move forward without a plan. So it's got a little bit of, here's a prime example of something that's coming out a little bit like the opposite of the card in the upright and a little bit like a different meaning that happens in the reverse. So the seven of feathers in the upright can be about, um, it says down here, preparation and resourcefulness. It's also strategy. Um, sometimes it's a card of deception. In this case, it's not really coming across so much as deception, except for um, a lack of self-deception when it's in the reverse here. So it feels a little bit like that strategy isn't truly there, but it's okay because you've got that self-trust, which comes from that lack of self-deception. With that self-trust, you're okay with moving forward without a solid plan in place. There's something about that, but this is um, energy in this moon that's going to impact both of you. You also have the shaman card in the reverse. So this is about wisdom um, that wants to be passed to you, but for some reason it's not it's not really making it to you. It's like it's being put on hold a little bit. I don't know that that's necessarily um, the end of the world. So when you think about putting wisdom on hold that you do actually need and you do want to avail yourself of, it sounds like a bad thing to put it on hold, but I think it's like it's a situation where you're kind of not quite ready to hear it just yet. Um, you're not quite ready to hear it because you're still working through some things. Um, with the three of feathers here, it's a concept of recognizing what is here for you. It's recognizing the lessons that are here for you and the tools that have come up. You're going to have some new things that crop up for you emotionally that may feel like you haven't seen them in quite some time. A little bit of um, healing that comes from way back, but yet is just as material today as it might have been back then. You have a king of wands, tendency to want to control things, but also the ability to control things. So I would just say that the desire to control things is not inherently bad, okay? If you're not going outside of your natural sphere of control, if you are being careful not to let your ego get in the way. So there is... Um, there is definitely not a, an overly negative sense to this card, but it's definitely as also a slippery slope. Um, with the Seven of Pentacles in the reverse, you're going to find that it feels like there's something you should have done, should have invested in, but didn't. Don't let that be the end of the world for you. With the Judgment card here, it's basically just you being able to see that. But with the Five of Cups... Um, this is, that's where you take it and make it feel like the end of the world. It actually, it, not necessarily the end of the world, but this is where it feels like, oh, I'm ashamed that I didn't move forward. And that's the sort of thing that will enable you to use this King of Wands energy in ways that don't necessarily benefit you. The idea here is to um, use that energy in ways that do benefit you. So when you see I have a place that I need to invest, rather than freaking out and putting you know, an, an overwhelming desire to control the situation, go ahead and just see it for what it is and say, okay, no time like the present. Because honestly, that's kind of the way this works out. Three months from now, you look into it, you have three months worth of investment in yourself, and that three months was going to pass anyway. So it's about looking at it and say, with very true, um, being able to see the truth, pull in the honest truth. You don't have to admit it to anybody. This is about being vulnerable within yourself honestly it's also about embracing your dreams for what they are so part of that requires a vulnerability requires an ability for you to say here's something that maybe has um, put itself out as an idea for me in the past but for whatever reason I didn't take it it wasn't the right time now is the right time for you to reevaluate this and to be thinking about something that um, I, I get the sense that it kind of scares you and we've been hearing a lot about this. Um, it's not always going to take the same form. It's going to be a little different for everybody. And it's another one of those things that, you know, you kind of have to keep it going. So I, I talked a little bit about yesterday's reading. I gave you guys some idea of like a real world example because it was my world example of something that I talked about two days earlier in a reading, which was really putting yourself out there and, you know, doing something that crosses the line deeply into some outside of your comfort zone, okay? And then you make it happen anyway 
day. Um, but the thing is, you got to do that periodically. It can't just be you do it once. You know, I did it when I started this business. I did it when I came on YouTube. I did it again a couple days ago, um, you know, when I went out to play the clarinet for people that, you know, in public, you know, that was terrifying. That was my new thing. And, and every time it happens, you kind of reawaken in yourself some idea of where you're headed. Every time you do something like this, it makes you feel alive, but it also gives you some idea of where the edges are of your healing. And so you're being encouraged to keep walking down that path and keep thinking about what those things might be. Even if you also just did something that opened you up wide, allow yourself to see where it wants to take you. Or if you're not ready to see that yet, or you haven't quite figured out what direction that's going to take, this is the energy that kind of lays you open to see that. But with this King of Wands, um, just make sure you're not taking too much um, control over it. So when the fear comes, don't let that help you decide how you're going to move forward so much. Because the fear is going to happen. Um, you just kind of have to work around it. With this King of Pentacles, it's that feeling that we've been seeing in you, that sense of deserving. Um, it's in this energy. So it, this is maybe we've been seeing it because it's been that moon energy, that new moon energy kind of coming out earlier. Because um, a lot of times we'll notice that the energy starts to come out before the full moon, before the new moon, before the Mercury retrograde, which, by the way, that starts tomorrow in earnest but we've been feeling it already so part of this vulnerability kind of butts up against that um, mercury retrograde energy as well so keep that in mind i think tomorrow we'll do a reading where we get a little bit more deeply into that specifically but know that it is in the energy of this already there is the sense of digging in pretty deeply to something that you maybe um haven't quite gotten past haven't gotten a chance to get over and you might be surprised by what you find there open yourself up for it don't um don't allow yourself to get too deeply into trying to control the situation because again that's going to take away from this you will have that feeling of i don't have power over this whole thing it's okay because you don't necessarily need power over everything in order to influence it in the direction that it needs to go this king, this knight of wands is in the upright. So you had the knight of acorns, which is the equivalent of the knight of wands in the reverse with that in and out sort of energy. This is a passionate movement forward. So you have this king of pentacles, you have this knight of wands talking about passionate energy, moving you forward toward a change that you are ready, willing and able to make. And here we have it again. So basically the chariot is pushing in that new direction. Tricky bit about the chariot is it's not always a clear direction. So sometimes um, when you see this card, you'll notice that this is a person driving a couple of horses. And that's kind of what you see here. But they're driving a couple of horses that are not necessarily going the same way. Um, so sometimes it can be a little bit challenging to figure out how to direct that. That's where you come in. Your desires come in. Your willingness to be confident comes in. But you have a confidence in you um, as a result of this energy because that's what this moon brings with it. It's a, it's very much um, new opportunities, new possibilities, and an opportunity to embrace that unknown. Um, embracing the unknown and really just kind of leaning into that are part and parcel to the energy of this moon. You have a lot of potential here and so when we get over here we'll look at how you need to um, maybe think about this and where your areas of focus could be um, but this is exciting this is exciting to see um, that it's really gonna it's supportive energy in that sense now you have the King of Cups here, reminds me a little bit of this King of Wands in that um, this King of Cups has an emotional limitation associated with it that if you allow it to take over is going to shut down some of your success for you. And so try not to allow that to happen because it, it's not necessarily going to create a setback that you can't come back from. It just creates a setback that you... Um, that you will have, you know, you'll have to come back from. It's just, and realize that this is energy that's happening for both you and your person. So if you're in contact with them, you will see this coming out for them uh, within their within their communications. It may be that communicating with you is that thing that's way outside their comfort zone. And with it being about to be a Mercury retrograde, that wouldn't surprise me in the least. 
Now, what makes it extra good, though, is you've got this Queen of Pentacles that's got self-worth. It's got nurturing, self-nurturing. It's basically overall, um, along with the Seven of um, seven of Wands, it's a very well done ability to, so it's a feeling of being able to move forward like this chariot card represents. Um, there's a lot of can do in this, but you have to also be willing to do it and not to fall to the fear that causes you to try and really take control and, and hold on to the reins. Because pulling back the reins, a lot of times, uh, shortening up the reins will, will make things go more slowly, makes the animal that you're riding move more slowly, makes the horses in the chariot move more slowly when you shorten up on those reins. And that's what happens when you try to control. So just keep that in mind. Now, I know that this is energy that impacts you in the soulmate situation. It also impacts your soulmate. So the thing is, you're listening to this and that gives you that, that a little bit of a heads up as to how you might address it. Your person may not be and may, and I have a tendency, they, I believe they have a tendency to go toward that control emperor in reverse, which I don't see out here. Um, but the that king of wands is not just here you have the ability to do it like you have also with this knight of wands it's also that you may be um, feeling that shame a little bit too heavily and it might manifest more as fear so be watching for that with your person but also it helps to be aware that if you if you do hear from them there's a potential that you might now we got the page of shells in the reverse saying that they may be a little bit more into themselves right now but if you start to see that um with them being able to communicate and reach out of course like we saw before it's necessary to remain somewhat gentle in the situation that's going to give you your best results um so let's take a look at where your focus can be at this time of the new moon in Sagittarius. And it's one that allows you to be more vulnerable, allows you to see those dreams that you could maybe embrace and be willing to move toward. Um, let's see here. So we've got the nine of shells in the reverse. That's figuring out what is not right about things. It's figuring out what you want to change in your life. But it's also with the Ten of Crystals. Um, so Ten of Crystals is about your home life. It's about your, what is, how can I describe what this feels like? So in the, um, in Crystals is Earth Energy. And so this Queen of Pentacles, the King of Pentacles, those are energy of, um, those are the heads of household for this Ten of Pentacles, Ten of Crystals energy. And it is, very capable, very, this is the household that everybody has what they need. There's a strong sense of everybody um, being able to define their needs, has their, has their needs met, they have the proper resources in place. This is a time where you're able to take a look at your own household and determine if that is really what's happening or if there's some changes that need to be made there. You have opportunities to make decisions, but also keep in mind that you're seeing here what isn't right. So when we see the nine of shells, it's about one of the things that you're here to do is to figure out what it is that would truly constitute your wish fulfillment and realizing that what you thought you knew about your wish fulfillment may have changed a little bit. Same with your person. That's part of the reason that we see what they're, the experience that they're going through. They have figured out that what they sought and thought was going to be the thing that made them happy is not necessarily what makes them all that happy. And so they're having to figure out some new things, but so are you. Here you are figuring out why well, I know what doesn't make me happy. I understand what about my household, so with this card representing the household, is not ideal and what I would like to see change. Um, but not only that, you've got this ability to kind of communicate it a little bit better than usual, and yet this page of crystals, um, there there may still be some, that's, that's, that's like a page of pentacles in the reverse. We see it over here. It's the unlearned lesson, but it's it's your ability with the judgment card that we saw over here um, to, to kind of feel your way through why it feels a little bit like you're going to be watching yourself, observing, observing yourself in the situation and saying, well, I can see the lesson that I haven't quite learned, um, but also seeing your response to it then and being able to say, okay, I'm going to be able to guide myself in and help myself move through this period of 
being able to feel vulnerable, being able to use those vulnerabilities to be able to make better decisions around this household that you now have some better ideas about. Now, you're not going to have all the answers with the moon here, but the moon also, um, and this came out yesterday, but it came out in a slightly different context. One of the cool things about this is that this is a collective that is getting better and better at making decisions without having all of the information already. With the six of cups in the reverse, it's about doing it with while with eyes on the future rather than eyes on the past. And, and not to say that you wouldn't be using some of what you know of the past and what you experienced in the past, um, but it does say that you would be able to more focus on what is coming, and that is what you would be re recommended to do. Especially as you're looking at this nine of shells, here's what's not going well in this ten of crystals uh, household. And when I say household, it's not just the house you live in or the family that you live in. It's your overall lifestyle. So it could have to do with your job. It could be having to do with places that you find yourself, but really it's your overall environment that you live in. And you may want to make some different um, decisions about it. You might be more adept at seeing what doesn't work here for you and being able to see it and be honest about it. Now, it may cause you to make some, have some breakthroughs and some realizations that from an emotional standpoint kind of rock your world. Um, but I see those as being overly, uh, overall positive. So, you know, we, sometimes we talk about the worst of it being behind you. We talk about the worst of the pain being behind you. You have this wonderful confidence that helps to be able to push things forward. And the Queen of Wands really does have the capacity to push things forward. Um, has that kind of battering ram sort of energy sometimes. And that's, that's the, you know, moving toward an unbalanced version. But sometimes you need battering ram energy to kind of get through a particularly tough door. When that door is within yourself, it is particularly useful and not necessarily negative. I also see you getting incredibly... Um, better suited like you become better suited <whistles> hold on okay sorry about that you become better suited for basically coupling up partnering up this could be it doesn't necessarily have to be romantic but it feels pretty romantic in this context and you're becoming better suited for that because you are becoming more aware of your own needs and more able to articulate them so this is something that you have been pretty good at and generally you have been um, you're just getting better at it in this context you learn something that helps you to get better at it um, and then you know we already talked about the queen of Ra the wands and the um, battering ram sort of energy in there. So that allows you to move into places where you see that it's okay, I've got something that's going to be a good idea. Um, and to be able to actually enforce that and make it happen. Uh, let's see what else wants to come out here for you to focus on. Okay, so Nine of Pentacles. This one was thinking about coming out earlier, but I felt like I had to put it away. Um, with the Nine of Pentacles, there is, you know how you were making decisions with less information up there? This is making decisions with maybe a little bit less information, but more than that, it's making decisions and feeling good about what your path is forward without having... Um, feeling like you don't have it all together, you know, feeling like you don't have everything figured out and, and maybe even less than you usually, like it's a lower threshold of being able to figure, move forward with having fig things figured out than usual. So, um, being able to move forward and saying, I really don't know how this is going to end. I just have a lot of trust in myself that allows me to do that. Like we saw with the seven of feathers. So that's part of what's coming through with this new moon. Um, with the seven of cups here in the reverse, this is about, so we talked about moving forward and not quite knowing everything that you need to know, not having all the information, not feeling like you necessarily have it all together. This is about feeling like you don't know which road to take, okay? Um, but with this, I, I encourage you to leverage this seven of feathers in the reverse energy though, because that's the energy that allow it comes with this moon and allows you to be able to pick a path forward despite the fact that maybe you don't have all the details around it. Those paths might seem a little bit cloudy, but you realize that you trust yourself to move forward because even if things don't necessarily work out the way that you had hoped for or the way that you planned for, um, 
Like it's still going to be fine and you know it. You also know that you're moving down your path of healing slowly, steadily, and with some pretty good, um, Not it's not necessarily a fast pace, but it is a steady pace. This is part of what brings that sense of uh, trust within you. It's it's what helps to build that um, seven of feathers so that when you when you feel that coming from this moon, you're able to say, no, that's really me. I do feel that confidence, you know, like the seven of wands confidence that comes with this. Part of it is just coming from within you because you're aware that you're consistently moving in a good direction. But you're probably going to have to step back and take a look at the big picture to truly um, be able to articulate that and to get the perspective that shows you how you've been moving in the right direction over time. Um Okay, so with this Eight of Pentacles that has just popped out, there is, just like with the Seven of Pentacles, where you're going to have that feeling like there's a place that you could have or should have invested, but maybe you haven't. Um, and then you might feel like you don't know if you really can or should jump into that. And as I said, three months from now, you're going to be able to see your progress and that three months was going to pass anyway. Here's where you're going to be able to be a little bit frustrated with it. You're going to you're going to be able to see it and say these are changes that I would like to make, investments that I would like to make, something that I would like to master or be much better at. There's an emotional self-mastery involved in this that you feel like you don't have, but I feel like there's also more to it than that. Um, but you're going to jump in and be willing to begin to do the work in a whole new way. And that energy comes with this full moon, or I'm sorry, this new moon. It also comes with this Mercury retrograde and some of the pieces that come. I can't wait to get into that one. We'll do that tomorrow. Um, but it's it takes time. It actually does take time to master these things. But in this energy, you feel like you're ready to do that. You know that you're moving in a direction that is going to be better and going to present additional opportunities. So you already have some opportunities. You grab those, you leverage those, they open up greater opportunities for you. Um, let's get you an oracle card. And you know, when we do the new moon and the full moon readings, I typically like to use this deck. I'm not saying it's the only time I use it, but I do typically like to do that. So we've got the full moon in Cancer, a personal issue reaches resolution. It reaches resolution and it has everything to do with the fact that you are changing the way that you are kind of vulnerable within yourself. Being vulnerable to yourself helps this personal issue reach resolution. But I can't escape the feeling that it has, you know, more than one step. You don't just all of a sudden say, oh, I suddenly understand. It's going to be more a matter of you move through something that helps to enhance that understanding. And when you get closer uh, to the end of this time frame. So the moon, the new moon energy isn't just today. It's energy that's been building and that's going to continue. And as you get closer to the end of that time frame, that's where you'll start to see the resolution start to weave itself together. So it's not simple. It's not quick. It sets you on a road to mastering something else, to investing elsewhere with yourself. There's a lot of positivity in this. I feel like this new moon is, and this is typical for new moon energy, it's the beginning of something. It's not the end of something. So personal issue reaches resolution because of what's been building and what's been happening. So um, I can't wait, like I said, to get into that Mercury retrograde energy. We're going to do that tomorrow. Just kind of see what that means for you. Um, and that one will have an extended. This one I'm not going to put an extended on because I just kind of wanted to see what the energy was coming in from this moon. And it's definitely a lot of opportunity, but it's opportunity for you to move forward in vulnerability um, within yourself more than anything else. So it's not necessarily um, going out and being vulnerable for everybody else, even though it may include that. It's much more important what's going to show inside of you. So I'll go ahead and wrap it up for here. And I look forward to seeing you again in tomorrow's reading.